Thanks for staying with us. Now, today is International Customs Day, and this year's celebration is dedicated to the united efforts of customs to emerge from the coronavirus crisis and support people and businesses that, that by strengthening the global supply chain, reinforcing collaboration, harnessing technology, and putting people at the center of transformation process with the slogan, Customs Bolstering Recovery renewal and resilience for a sustainable supply chain. I mean, this is very, very important, you know, because customs are the, the, the people in charge of um, imports and, and exports, exports from any country. And now we know that we are, we are hoping to receive, um, what's it called, the vaccines from other parts of the world. So we want to just celebrate something, all the customs uh, Something officials. also struck me when you just talked about the vaccine. How are we going to actually preserve No, 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 but a lot of government officials, they've been, I mean, we saw... With the Nigeria, no, 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 no light, no, 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 no. anything saw, can happen. Even in Ekiti State, we saw the refrigerate, um, the refrigerating systems being set up in different countries. So, I mean, sorry, different parts of the, the country. So things are going on. Let's trust the country a bit, you know? Trust. Yeah. All right, so what did you find for us in the news? Trust is a... Auntie, don't a, uh, 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 anything. <laughs> trust is a, is a big word right now in Nigeria. What did you find for us in the news? And, and that's why we always have a problem trusting what the government says. And we want to, you know, cross-check and go back and take a look at it. And based on what we have um, already gone through before, or listened to the government. Each time the government comes in, they say, give us a chance, give us a chance. They always mess up in one way or the other. So trust is a is a is a huge one for us in Nigeria currently. And this is what actually got my attention with the news I actually found, which is despite threats, Nigeria sa is safer than Nigeria is safer than uh, before by Buhari, mm. by um, Lai Mohamed. Lai Mohamed yeah. Now, I don't believe that under Buhari's regime, Nigeria is safer. Yes, it might have been controlled, but could have been a lot better. The highways are not safe. People cannot tra travel from point A to point B without being scared of being ambushed by herdsmen or bandits. bandits, which is the normal word now. I think the most used word in Nigeria currently between um, 2015 and, and, and today is bandits, hoodlums, um, kidnappers. And men, kidnappers. This is something that has gone on for far too long. Mm. During uh, the uh, period of um, the regime of um, um, the past president, good luck, Jonathan, he, at least it was just in the north, not a situation you know, so where let, you're able, let me even, not able to travel from Kaduna let me to even, Abuja let me even chip without in a, a little and bit. And at that time, one second, and at that time, at least children were safe in school, aside mm. from the Chibok girls. Not a situation whereby children are in school and they just go and, you know, pick them up. Mm. So for me, I, I think, uh, if I want to add a bit, I think a lot of us that, um, that believed in the presidency of Buhari in 2015, especially with, with the event of the Chibok that just happened, we thought that he had military experience. Now, I have been, I lived in Kaduna all my life before, mm. I know, marriage brought me down south and all of that. Welcome. So we lived through the Sharia crisis and all of those things. Mm -hmm. Then it was President Obasanjo that was in, in power. power. So because he had a military backing, we could see swift actions whenever there was anything called a riot. Because riots were breaking out, religious wars were breaking out. You know, but not as the way it is now. It, it seems like, like civil unrest. But this it one lingers. Is like... Can I come in? Yes, please come in, Lamy. Mm -hmm. Okay, because before you tell me that the time is fast spent. Okay, for me, I would say that um, I really do not understand government officials, especially Alaji Lai Mohammed, hmm. rating the government. I think it should be coming from us, exactly. not from them. Mm -hmm. We should be their mirror. Mm -hmm. So why are they assessing themselves? I would say the, the 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 country has even become more unsafe in this regime because Absolutely. during um, Jonathan's period, it was just a bit to the south, uh, sorry, down north. But now it is everywhere. everywhere. At that time, I was battling with Boko Haram, mm -hmm. but now we're battling with the headers, we're battling with bandits, we're battling with kidnappers and all that. So I really don't I, I don't understand the yardstick for the assessment. Maybe he's not living in the country we are living. And okay, so my story, this, okay. my story, because we, we're actually <laughs> running out, out of time. time. My story is actually tied to this. I will mm -hmm. take my story, then let me you follow up with your story. Okay. So my story, of course, we saw the breaking okay. news when we 
We said finally, so somebody just decided to wake up. Um, President Mohamed Buhari has accepted the immediate resignation of the service chiefs and their retirement from service. Mm. The resignation and um, announcement of the new military leaders were communicated mm. by Femi Adeshina, the, uh, the spokesman for the presidency. So we're mm. saying to ourselves, those involved are Chief of um, Defense Staff, Chief of Army Staff, Tuko Borotai, Chief of Naval Staff, Air Admiral Ebok. So the, the list is, is long. Endless. So President, President Buhari thanked the outgoing service chiefs for what he calls their overwhelming achievements mm. <sighs> in our efforts at bringing enduring peace to our dear country, wishing them well in future endeavors. Like, for goodness sake, one of the new service chiefs uh, uh, that was appointed, I think he has a bit of, um, what's it called, to answer. I, I read his, um, his profile. <laughs> yes. They said that in, that's the Atehiru. The, uh, the man, the um, Atehiru, General Atehiru, he was relieved of operations in Lafayette Dole and redeployed to the Nigerian Army Headquarters, right, um, as Deputy Chief of Policy and Plans. The Nigerian press cited Defense Ministry sources that the change in the command was related to poor performance in the field and inability to um, catch Shakao at that time, which, is, which was 2017. Mm -hmm. So in two weeks prior to that, um, Boko Haram had killed about 13 people, injured 50 people in twin suicide bombings in Biu, and killed 50 people in twin suicide bombing on a, at a mosque in Mubi, and attacks different uh, forward um, operating base. Mm. You know, this is one of the new service chiefs mm. that is being appointed by the president. So I'm just mm -hmm. wondering, um, 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 Lami, maybe you would help me, mm. you know, are we truly really ready to fight insecurity in this country when you already know this person's cv mm. you know they've already brought out the cv that the person has a bit uh, a lot of um, lapses. In, lapses right but you know what let me come to let me follow up your story mm. then you can now continue from there my quick take on that quick take on that is that i think we're on a cruise on automatic cruise on this in this country mm. i'm not sure that the president is mentally aware of where we are at the moment. I'm not even sure he made those appointments. I'm not sure. And this, I'm going to tie to my to my own story. And this story is about this, but the evils are now talking about marginalization, which I quite agree with them. I concur totally with this. At this point in time, considering what just happened between the Fulanis and the farmers in um, Igongon local government, sorry, Igongon in you know, your state, the country is tensed. A lot of people are dissatisfied. There's a lot of tension going on. And boom, just from the blues, you divert us to the appointment of the replacement of the, sorry, the appointment of the service. And only to marginalize the evil, the Southeast, which is a very, very important. Because I would, I, I would say that they are the economic backbone of Nigeria, whether mm. anybody likes it or not. But I would say the Southeastern extraction of Nigeria are very, very important to Nigeria. So I really do not understand why they will be excluded from this. It because is, already it's, we it's, know we are fractured. We are a fractured nation. Yeah. So this should not come in at the time. Mm -hmm. it's, and, and this is, I, I this is what, this is what uh, keeps, you know, um, reoccurring all the time. Mm -hmm. And people are not understanding something that I, I think we're going to be talking about that on Thursday. That's our topic for, uh, the, you know. People don't understand that. You see, we are different people mm -hmm. trying to live together as one right mm -hmm. so in fairness what it what is fair to you want to tell me that you've not found one person that is competent you know we're not trying to divide people across religion okay, um, what's it called tribal yeah. lines yeah. no we're not trying to do tribal but lines and all of those things but there are competent let, people in the east there me, are competent people in the west there are competent people in the north competent people in the south even to breed togetherness and to to really find a lasting solution there is, it is, there's nothing wrong with you bringing those people all together to say, you know what, come together and serve the country. Let me play the devil's advocate here. Um, let's assume that the government or the president actually um, um, was appointed mm. the service chiefs based on merit. So let's say, for example, that these individuals that have been, come, that have been brought on board, uh, they did it right, mm -hmm. okay? They know their onions. What if the evil man who happens to be there doesn't know his onion? Uh, wait, that's why I said on there are competent people. Where will that's, why I said, the there? that's why I said I'll play the devil's play them. advocate. Uh, I'm just here. saying that there are competent people everywhere. 
Who are please? Just let me call in. Mm -hmm. Um, you see what happened to the federal character. We have a federal character system in Nigeria. So mm -hmm. what happened to them? Are you telling me from the five states of the north, south, east, they couldn't find just one person who was fit? to have taken over the position. Why do we position? always like crying wolf whenever there is an appointment? We say, this is how we actually promote tribalism in no, the country. No, this is not issue of tribalism. Or I, ethnicity. I, I, uh, wait, let me, let's leave the matter because it's not issue of tribalism. I'm saying that, you see, we are already in a tense situation in this country right now. Mm. So I think it's more of inclusion. Yes. Yes. Because a That's lot better. a lot of people the feel not so easy when you people are playing the tribal card. No, this is not tribal card. When people feel location. marginalized, they mm. have every right to feel so. Because over and over again, time and time again, we've seen this appointment not representing their people. So mm. let us be seen to be fair. That's my point. Uh. Simple. We'll take a break. I only That's not our conversation for tonight. Oh. <laughs> Please. We want to talk about King Jong-un. Hey, in fact, if you know the number of messages I've gotten on top of this uh, Kim Jong-un's comment, but that's what we'll be talking about. Stay with us, we'll be right back.